Hello and welcome to this video on titrations. My name is Eric Kim and in this video we'll be calculating the pH at the equivalence point of a weak acid strong base titration or a weak base strong acid titration. In an earlier video, you saw how strong acid strong base titrations always give a pH of 7 at the equivalence point. If you recall the definition of the equivalence point, it's when the equivalence of acids are equal to the equivalence of base. However, since weak acids have a conjugate base that is not inert, the conjugate base of a weak acid will go on to grab a proton from water to reform the conjugate acid and hydroxide. And the hydroxide is the reason why there is a basic pH at the equivalence point. To solve for pH, you have to determine the concentration of hydroxide ion in solution, and since this is an equilibrium, you have to use a Kb value of the conjugate base and an ice table to solve for hydroxide. The calculations required in generating ice table values was covered in another video. Similarly, for weak base strong acid titration, the conjugate acid BH plus that results after equivalence has been reached can then go on to donate hydrogen ion to water to reform the original base and create the hydronium ion. You need to use a Ka expression and the ice table to solve for the concentration of hydronium in order to calculate the pH. That hydronium ion is the reason why there is an acidic pH at the equivalence point for weak base strong acid titration. You can see the difference in pH values at the equivalence points graphically as well. If you titrate a weak acid with a strong base, the titration curve will have an equivalence point shown by the dotted gold line, and extrapolating the midpoint will show a pH at the equivalence point that is higher than 7. Similarly, for a weak base strong acid titration, the titration curve's midpoint will show a pH at the equivalence point that is lower than 7. Let's put this knowledge along with all the other acid-base components from earlier videos together in the applied questions. A student is titrating a certain volume of ammonia, which is a weak base, by adding 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. The Kb of ammonia is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Part A asks for the concentration of ammonia. To solve for the concentration of unknown bases, Use the equation NAVA equals NBVB and rearrange to solve for the normality of base NB. The normality of hydrochloric acid is 0.1 normal, but the volume of acid isn't given in the question stem. Instead, using the titration curve, the equivalence point is demarked by the inflection point and extrapolating down, you can see that it took 30 milliliters of hydrochloric acid to neutralize the ammonia divided by the volume of ammonia given to us in the question stem, which is 60 mL, the normality of ammonia is 0.05 normal. The second part of the question asks you to calculate the pH at the equivalence point. Recall that at the equivalence point, all of the ammonia has reacted with hydrochloric acid and we're left with chloride ions and ammonium. In part A, you calculated the normality of ammonia, and it's tempting to use that same normality for the ammonium concentration, but remember that the final volume has changed. We have to compensate for that, so use the equation N1V1 equals N2V2 and rearrange to solve for the normality of ammonium. Add in the normality of ammonia that is calculated earlier, multiply by the volume of 60 mL, and divide by the final volume of 60 plus 30 milliliters. The normality of ammonium is 0.033 normal. Now that you have the normality of ammonium, let's consider what's going on with ammonium and its dissociation. Ammonium will donate a proton to water to reform ammonia and the hydronium ion, and in order to calculate the pH, you need to calculate the concentration of hydronium. The distribution will be determined by the Ka of the reaction. Setting up the Ka equation, where the concentration of the reactants are divided by the concentration of the products, there's a problem. The question stem doesn't state the Ka, but the Kb for ammonia. However, this can be converted using the Ka-Kb conversion through the Kw constant. Described in an earlier video, Kw is equal to the Ka multiplied by the Kb. So rearranged, Ka will equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14 
divided by the KB, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, to give a KA value of 5.5 times 10 to the minus 10. At this point, it's time to bring up our ice table. The initial calculated concentration of ammonium is 0.033 normal. The initial concentration before dissociation of ammonia and hydrogen is both zero. The change will be minus x for ammonium and plus x for both ammonia and the hydrogen ion. The equilibrium concentration will be 0.033 minus x for ammonium and plus x for ammonia and hydrogen ion. You can add in those variables and values to the Ka expression set up earlier to get this configuration. Now, in an earlier set of lessons on ice tables, there was an approximation you can make if the Ka or Kb value is a small, small fraction of 1, which it is in this case. In essence, you're assuming that the x value is much, much smaller than the 0.033 on the bottom of the fraction, so we can simply ignore that value. That way, you can avoid solving for a quadratic equation. Rearrange and simplify to get x squared equals 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10 multiplied by 0.033 to get 1.8 times 10 to the minus 11. Square root the x to get 4.3 times 10 to the minus 6. If you look at the table, x represents both the concentration of ammonia and the concentration of the hydrogen ion. And the hydrogen ion concentration is what we need to calculate the pH. Almost there. Last step is to convert the concentration of hydrogen ion to pH. So pH equals negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Plug in the value from the earlier calculation, and the pH of the solution at the equivalence point is 5.36. Phew, you did it. This particular problem is a combination of five separate equations as well as knowledge about how weak bases dissociate and background information about what's happening at the equivalence point. Feel free to come back to these steps and review them again so that you're able to work through similar problems in your own practice. Great job!